Hi, everybody. I am Holly Celiano, and I have today John Dowling. Welcome, John. It's been a while since I've flipped the tables and interviewed you, and we haven't been together in a while. So welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a, it's been a welcome change. A lot of our, our fans and audience were looking for you, so I'm glad that you were gracious enough to, uh, to include us in your busy schedule. <clears throat> thanks. You're welcome. So let's just start and... Um, Talk about you came out yesterday with a silver coin with your name and face on it. And um, a lot of people now are saying John's become a grifter. So why don't you address that and put everybody that's saying that to ease? Sure. First of all, it's a laughable comment. I, I love how people jump to conclusions and never actually they hear what they want to hear as usual. And instead of listening with critical thinking, they go with emotions. Yeah, because I'm such a grifter. It's why I've, I've never asked my audience for a single donation. Um, <clears throat> we have a support of sponsorships for that. Uh, the purpose of this coin, first of all, as I told you offline, I'm going to say it transparently to the audience. This was not my idea. This was the co-creator of the channel's brain trust because he's on the marketing side. It never even occurred to me to do this. So then people will say, well, then why did it happen? Okay, I'll tell you why. And I have, uh, so there are three reasons why I told my audience already I'm okay with it, or I can live with it. And I prayed about it before this decision was made. Number one, this is to commemorate the season we're in of the wealth transfer for God's giving people. It's memento. Two, um, like judgmental comments fail to realize is that we are giving away several coins to the people in most need, most, most especially the elderly and people who are on a fixed income or who don't have any silver at all, have no precious metal cache in the game, we're putting our money where our mouth is by being solution oriented instead of problem oriented. So we've already basically what we're doing is anybody who gets a coin automatically goes into a raffle so that it's as fair as possible. Um, <clears throat> and then out of that, we're going to take about five to 10% of the sales of the coins and put those into giving them away. Third of all, I don't see any of that money directly. It doesn't go to me. Uh, and then third, the, the other reason I was okay with it is so when I have my children one day and they say, dad, what did you do during this critical time? Yeah, I could tell them verbally. I could maybe even show them these types of podcasts. But there's something about I'm going to be leaving a legacy to them anyway, as number says to your children's children's children. And part of that entails precious metals, obviously. So it's a way to show them this is what we did to commemorate the season. It isn't so much about me. It's about what God did through this process. So it's what it represents. Okay. And so uh, also, people forget that this is a pneumatic coin. It becomes a collectible. So silver, as you well know, is only going to increase in value this year and beyond. We expect it to go between 25 and 26 in the four-figure range. So it's it's going to have to go parabolic and level with gold. And we already see gold went over 2,700 today for the first time in history. So we know that silver is going to fall because it's a more important metal because it's used for manufacturing. We've talked about AI, robotics, med beds. So it should supersede gold at some point. So they're investing in something you should already be investing in in silver. And because there's only 100 made, it makes it more valuable. Not because I'm on it, because it's because of the rareness of it. Um, it costs money for Chris to, it's like in music, if you're buying vinyl or a certain amount of CDs, you make an album or something, you, you do a minimum run, there's a certain cost. The more you buy, the less it is. But what people also conveniently forget is there's a run, as I understand it, to make that coin and then to print it, put your face on it, do all these things, there are costs incurred. So it's not just the price of silver, because even when you buy silver at a coin dealership, there's spot price and then there's commission. They got to make their money too, right? So there's a whole bunch of things that people made those comments conveniently left out, but I am not grifting. I am not seeing a dime of this. In fact, we're giving away, as I said, roughly 10% uh, as a charitable thing, as a, you call it faith, charitable, humanitarian, whatever, to help those in need. So we're actually putting our money where our mouth is. So yeah, it's it's not like that at all. Okay, well, thank you for addressing that. No, no problem. Um, so let's talk about where we are in the world. I know Kim mm. Clement has always spoken about, and I know you've talked to me about this, that with the Iran and Israel, when we see that happen in the world, that's when we know we're, we're this is ready to pop. So can yes. you address that and go into that for everybody? And if people aren't familiar with what Kim Clement said, if you want to just bring that up um, and share with them. Sure. So again, for a reprisal for you in the audience, 
that may already know, Kim Clement was one of the most accurate prophets of our time. He was not false. He was very legit. He called President Trump to be the president in April 7th of 2007. You can go and YouTube it and find it yourself. It's not me making updates. I don't do that. And uh, he said that um, God was going to take a non-praying man and put him in the White House and make him a praying man in the highest seat in the land and said he was going to be hot-blooded. And people always reference the Simpsons, but he was a good eight years ahead of the Simpsons in his prediction, in his not even prediction, it was prophetic anointing from God to do that. He also said that there would be a shift, to your point, Holly, in the segue, there would be a, a shift in the Middle East with the Dinar and Southeast Asia, which alludes to Indonesia and Vietnam as, as those touch points geographically. So there'll be a break in the financial system was exact words. And people say, why, why now? So <clears throat> here's the easiest way for me to explain it in a visual analogy. It's what I like to do. And everybody's gone bowling before, right? And so sometimes you get a perfect strike. Many times you don't. And we always get those pesky 7-10 splits, right? One pin on here, one side of the other. And they're just far enough away that you can't just hit them on a straight path. So in this analogy, um, a ram would be one pin on the left. And on the far corner of the edge of the of the outer uh, bowling alley, the lane, would be the U.S. militias in um, Iraq, right? Because the U.S., we know deep state, has been holding back Iraq and many other countries with money laundering at the dollar hedge money. This we know. So Israel's the bowling ball. So they can split the difference quite literally and take both sides out with the power plant attacks. Now, people have said, oh, well, they've done cyber attacks last week. Doesn't count because Kim Clement's prophecy was they would hit the secret nuclear power plants of Iran with missiles. People listen with missiles, not cyber attacks. So that's bogus. If that were legit with a cyber attack, we would have already reported on it and you and I would have already been discussing this. So as you know, I'm gonna share my screen with you and show you a couple of visual matrices, okay? So um, let me actually, let me stop that. That's not what I wanted. I wanna show you that, but at a later date. Um, and I need to get to this. Let me see if I can find it here. Bear with me a second. Okay, so let me let me know when you can see this. I see it. Now, this came out a couple of days ago on BRICS News that the oil refineries have been hit in Iran. So yesterday, CNN came out and said that uh, Netanyahu was ready to hit the certain targets within, um, I'm going to read it to you on my phone for posterity. So I just ask that you kindly bear with me for a moment um, while I pull this up and I can read it to you verbatim. Just stand by a moment. No uh, okay, so this is, this is courtesy of Currency365, one of the people that we trust a lot for information. Every, uh, every announcement is when Bitcoin is moving. We see Bitcoin's moving, right? The world is staged. Israel plans to strike Iran is now ready. This is according to CNN. Now, here's the kicker. Um, Israel's plan to strike Iran is now ready. According to CNN, the targets it seeks to strike include, one, missile launchers and drones, two, missile and drone storage sites and factories, three, missile bases and government buildings, four, nuclear research laboratories. So we're seeing basically, Holly, the prophetic word of Kim Clement coming to pass right now before us. Now I'll ask you a question to frame to the um, cache of the discussion. What do we have coming up potentially in the next three weeks? We have a U.S. election. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be interesting, since we know it's all scripted, if Israel makes their move right around or prior to the election? Mm -hmm. Think people would remember that? Oh, absolutely. So I'm not saying that's when it's going to happen, but it wouldn't surprise me in the least if they're drumming it up. Also, you probably know this because I know you're very on top of things as well. Very important news for people intersecting with Iraq and BRICS, which is uh, Judge Torres has said in the next 72 hours, they're going to make a decision on XRP on the counterclaim they made against the SEC for that bogus hold. But SEC was just basically trying to, I don't know a better word for it, cock block us and our wealth with XRP holding us up. But if you look at the prices, it's around 55 cents. It really hasn't shaken, which tells me the investors know they're holding the line, hodling, hold on for dear life. So once that decision is rendered, watch XRP go to a dollar, then it's next leg up. It's going to get really interesting because what do we have next week, Holly? BRICS Summit. 
Right. Right. So hopefully that answers. So you. when do you see the SEC and XRP, all of that starting to skyrocket with what's going on with the SEC, that pull coming off and that starting to skyrocket? Well, I think we I, first first things first, we, this is an elephant, so we have to bite it one piece at a time. I think once we see the XRP from Judge Torres, once she exonerates them officially in three days, and she could do it tomorrow. I mean, they, if you look at the SEC, we all thought that there was a very low chance that they were going to appeal, and they did just to be jerks, and it's already been countered. They pulled the, they did it four days before the deadline. So, but based on that, it wouldn't surprise me if Judge Torres said by tomorrow, hey, um, you know, making my decision on a Friday, let it marinate over the weekend. But if it goes till Sunday, I would see the dollar probably, it would probably go to a dollar within a week, thereabouts. And that's going to really put the squeeze on Gary Gensler because it's going to give him a black eye. He already knows that President Trump is way up in the polls. Everybody knows that, that has an IQ above double digits, knows that Tr President Trump is, and he's even more ahead than what they're admitting. So he's not going to to get back in optically. So he's probably going to jump ship. I would just be speculating on the time frame, but I would think it would be weeks after this counter appeal has dropped. Okay. So with that being said, let's dive into Iraq because a lot of people keep talking about what's going on with Iraq. I know they had, they were at uh, the UN, what was it, two weeks ago? Uh, three weeks ago at the General Assembly, yeah. Yes. Um, and there's been <clears throat> statements coming out that they are ready to change their rate and they have reached security and stability in their country, which is all part of what they need for a new rate in the HCL. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with them currently? So, yeah, the over, again, the overarching factor, I believe, we believe in our team is Israel hitting the power plants, because as Kim Clement said, back to your original question, once that happens, his exact words were days, two weeks later, the Denon, right? So let's start with that. Now, the latest update I have as of this morning from our team is that, um, as we thought, the, they have a Speaker of the House who's a corrupt Iranian proxy. He's been staying in a temporary position until they replace their Speaker. Some people naively believe or have been misinformed or disinformed that they weren't going to change their Speaker. That's not true. We put it on our Telegram. You know you've seen it. Al Mugadashi, I'm probably butchering the name, but you know, not from there. Al Mugadashi is going to be the one they have picked to succeed the other gentleman. Uh, Al Alaki, I think his name was. Or Ali Lock, they're going to replace him with this guy, and it's slated to be as early as next week. What a coincidence that that's happening the same week as BRICS, which, by the way, Iraq is part of BRICS. They're also, as you know, part of WTO. How are you going to bring a currency back to an international stage without a speaker? We wouldn't be able to have a, a new a change in uh, 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 regime change here in America without a speaker, would we? Look at what we went through. What uh, was it? with Johnson, was that nine months ago or something like that? And I, I was earlier this year? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. But look at how the country was up in arms about that, right? right. Now, that's significant thinking about Holly because what countries do, they copy each other. We had to change speaker, they have to change speaker. Our dollar is dropping. They, they're, yeah, it's everything correlates. They're ending the currency auctions this year. They've already said that. Um, when they pick the speaker and they go to BRICS, I would expect that, um, well, let me show you something, actually, if, if, I, if you don't mind, let me show you something that kind of correlates to what you're asking. So this is a video that came out, I think you probably saw it on Monday. This is the central bank governor of Iran um, speaking here, and I will play that for you in a moment when it comes up. Just bear with me here. Let me move this out of the way, and I will... Uh, it's on my screen. Yeah, I'm just trying to get this. Here we go. Okay. In the BRICS meetings, there were very good agreements made regarding the financial and monetary sphere. Iran made good agreements with the Central Bank of Russia during the period when they were the secretary of BRICS, and we had good agreements regarding the connection of card networks and monetary and financial cooperation, all of which we have raised in the BRICS. For example, today in the BRICS, the issue of paying for the transactions with local currency is one of the issues, and a very good agreement has been reached. 
good agreements regarding global reserve payments and the use of bonds for payment were also made. We now have a global financial system based mostly on the IMF, the World Bank, and Western countries. Unfortunately, due to the political interactions with those countries, today the world is considering other arrangements. Definitely within the BRICS group of countries, such arrangements will be made between the member states. We have a payment system between countries based on local currencies. That was one of the topics of this meeting. China, Russia, and Iran are very interested in it. We have moved towards being able to conduct transactions with other countries in local currencies and reduce the role of the US dollar in international transactions. Russia has also made good progress. I think the BRICS countries have developed well and will definitely develop in the future. The new development bank created by BRICS can pursue many of the development goals of the BRICS member countries. Because today, the World Bank operates within the framework of the goals of the United States and Western countries. We hope that NDB will play this role for the BRICS member countries and we want to become a member of NDB. So you saw that, you heard what he said, nationalizing their currencies. What does that mean? That means, let's put the piece together, Holly, de-dollarizing, right. right? So they're gonna de-dollarize, they're gonna power up. Now, this just came out moments ago, Holly. Nice segue here. Um, let me see if I can get to it here. Just bear with me a minute. Let me know when you see this. Okay, so welcome to the BRICS Play Card, a demo for now, big news coming from Kazan. This is what they're going to be using. They're going to be offering what's called the unit to all the respective countries to get into BRICS, including Zimbabwe, by the way, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, to It's backed in gold, not pegged gold, but actual asset-backed gold, tradable in real-time assets, something real for something real. People, um, some, some people think, oh, you know, they can't convert it. Yes, they can, because they've got 40% gold, Zimbabwe could carry the entire BRICS. We know this. We've talked about that many times. 40% physical gold, 30% Russian, 30% Chinese bonds, which are ostensibly gold instruments. They're just different ways to do it. They just came out today with this information about the BRICS pay card. Very, very exciting uh, news for what we're, what we're talking about. So who's in that? Iraq. We just talked about that. And there's all in 160 nations. They're only keying in on the 35 because what they're trying to do is minimize the exposure of what they're about to do. If you're about to attack your enemy, you're not going to tell them. You're going to do it surreptitiously, typically, right? As you said, the UN General Assembly, we had Sudani there. We saw what he said. We had um, Zambia and many other African nations talking about debt forgiveness, sovereignty, peace, and prosperity. Those are the buzzwords that we need to see and hear moving forward. Now we look at what they do, not what they say. But when you see these in actions, you see the Central Bank of Iran coming out and telling you that, because BRICS is pretty much sanctioned immune. It doesn't even affect them. They got Russia with, I think, their last I checked, fifth in gold reserves in the world. So they've got the cachet to kind of insulate themselves from whatever the U.S. deep, deep state is doing. So um, all this is to encapsulate the point about Iraq is as you put these pieces together, um, once they pick a speaker next week, once XRP is released, don't don't sleep on XRP because they are definitely uh, part of BRICS. In fact, as you know, back on August 12th, China, uh, excuse me, India conducted a rather large oil purchase with the Petro Yuan. How did they do that? They used BRICS. Excuse me. Well, yeah, they, they used XRP through BRICS right. to do it. So all this is telling me that Iraq is basically with a speaker of the house, with 90% of money, I think it's 95% of money laundering contained, with them going into BRICS, with them joining the WTO, it sends a strong message to me in action and putting puzzle pieces that at some point this year, they are poised to uh, come back to the international stage and reinstate. I've also heard that they're stopping their uh, currency auctions. I'm sure that's you're talking about that. Yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, that's done by, they said, by the end of the year. That doesn't mean they need to wait till December. And in fact, they're not going to telegraph the date, but I would hazard a strong hypothesis, probably a good word, that once President Trump has announced the winner, once we see XRP, once we see BRICS happen next week, but it all comes down to Israel. Once they hit the power plants, it's days to weeks because of Kim Clement. So I know you and I have talked privately about this, but for mm -hmm. the audience that is not dialed in, 
why are the power plants important? Why do they have to hit the power plants? The short answer is it has to look like the worst case scenario of World War III. Because all eyes have to be on Israel so that nobody's looking at XRP, nobody's looking at what Iraq is doing. Iraq is, you know, by getting the, going again, not to be redundant to answer your question, to go and get a central bank governor. If you told them that now nobody really cares because it kind of looks like they're just stalling, which they are optically, but they've got, you know, as well as I do, Holly, they've got this stuff all lined up. It's It's been dormant for a time. Once the power plants hit, it's going to look like, oh my God, World War III and the world is ending and da 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 and President Trump would love nothing more, rightly so, to put that on a deep state doorstep during the election because it's just going to make them look even more compromised than they already do. But ostensibly from an optic standpoint, it puts all the emphasis on Israel because Q said Israel would be last, right? Whether you believe in him or not, doesn't matter. Q would be last, like, excuse me, Israel would be last. Then Iraq can be free to go and pass all the laws, HCL, taxes and tariffs, set up the border, reconstruction. One of the articles I showed, I don't know if you saw on my telegram a week ago, they said that they've seen an uptick in population in Iraq. Why is that important? Because what happens, how you live near a major city and so do I, the more people you have, the more stuff you have to build to support it, right? So you have a higher population, you got to start, you're increasing your construction. What does that do? That brings out the private sector. Where's the rate, the real rate, the private sector? It's not in Forex. People actually think, some of these channels think that, that oh, you know, and you, got, you got the Wall Street Journal and Forbes and Yahoo News, there's a bunch of Yahoos, right? Telling the public, oh, oh uh, 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 you know, Iraq said it's true rate. No, they're not. That's a lie. Why? Because they don't want the public to be rich. They want as few people to know about this as possible. So they're gonna do everything they can optically to divert you away and then boom, it'll happen. So that's why the power plants are so instrumental. I've also heard that the nuclear uh, weapons mm -hmm. are stored in those power plants. So it will just abolish all of that. Good point. Yes, that's true. So for those reasons, you're absolutely right. And let's go back to Iraq. Their rate has been up and down yo-yoing. They were well over $4. Um, on their back screens, and now they they dipped down to I think it was down to three sixty nine, and now they're climbing back up over four again. Um, there's a certain rate, obviously, that they want to be at when this goes. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say with the going up and down with their rate? Well, first of all, you know me well enough to know we don't do dates and rates on our podcast, so I'm going to lead with that. That being said, let's look at what we do know historically and factually. That's what we'll point to. Um, and I don't want to hear arguments from people about it because we do our research. Phoenix PIR had pointed out who he himself is a retired Army Ranger, served in Afghanistan. He knows all about this firsthand, props to him, that he pointed out to me a year and a half ago when I was on his podcast. He said that, uh, did you know that when Saddam was a little kid, I think in the 1950s or thereabouts, that actually the dinar was five like, to get five to one against the dollar. I said, no, I didn't know that. So add that into another learning curve, which is always great. Um, if you took the rate of inflation, which is nothing more than a tax on the dollar, which is a deep state debt instrument, IOU, um, the, the rate that it would have to be to equal up what we've lost would be $4.25, right? So, Currencies fluctuate normally on the Forex 2 to 3% anyway. That's standard, just as gold and silver fluctuates because you have price manipulation and buyers and speculators and bulls and bear cycles and all that. That's normal in the old system. Um, there is a rate in the private sector they, where they want it to start out at, and then it will accelerate, as we're told, in the banks rapidly from that point on over... I'm, I'm hearing somewhere between a four to six week cycle. You have 90 days to exchange legally or, or, or you know, from historical replication, as we said before. But um, I think within four to six weeks, it's gonna hit its peak, whatever that rate is. I, I, I wouldn't focus people's attention on the rate. I would focus them as I always do on thanking God and trusting him for their supply. I think they're going to be more than happy Ephesians 20, 320. It's going to go exceedingly above and beyond anything they could ask or hope. I will tell you this, 
as XRP increases in value once they win, that might be a good indicator to look at for what the rate for the dinar will end up being. Okay. And with that being said, so I know everybody's burning question. I know you don't do data rates, nor do I. Right. But based on all these different puzzle pieces, which is really what we we take every piece of information and fit it into the big puzzle to try to see the greater picture, because we only know what we we know. There's other pieces we don't know that maybe need to come into play. When do you see the culmination of the puzzle pieces for this event that everybody is waiting on. Are you talking about Israel? The no, plant? I'm talking about the revaluation of the currencies. Well, I think one begets the other, as I said before. I think when we see Israel hit the power plants, that's when you're going to see the dinar happen, according to Kim Clement's prophecy, which he's been way more right than wrong. Nobody's 100%, of course, but he was the most accurate prophet of our time, so I like him so much. And he was a truly served man of God. Um, he he said days to weeks later the dinar. So I would be watching for that event, and then we'll see from there. Okay. So for everybody that's sitting on pins and needles waiting for this, that have been in for the long haul, right? There's kind of a, a broader picture that you can base this on because nobody knows. Right. I don't care how high up somebody is. Yeah. Nobody is going to tell you when this goes. Nobody's going to know ahead of time. It will happen, and then we'll find out. Right. Right. Because it would be it would be irresponsible to to say a date and rate. You know, I there five years ago before I was even doing these podcasts, like like yourself, I had a date I thought it was going to happen, and it didn't. And I've been you know upfront about that, and I learned you got to learn your lesson. Don't don't do that again. It was an honest. Exactly. It was an honest gesture. I was wrong. It happens. And uh, I'm not, you know, prideful to admit that. And that's why we made it a fundamental tenet of our channel, not to do dates and rates, but puzzle pieces, and more importantly, prophetic events. And as to your point, a handful of people in the military who know when it's going to happen, and they're not going to say, obviously, we don't have a seat at that table. And, and, and that's better that way. We It's for our own good, believe it or not, because we are, human beings are impulsive and emotional, as we can see by some of the ridiculous banal comments that you had to field in the beginning of this podcast, um, you know, that uh, people have opinions and people want to be right and people have thoughts, which, which you know, having thoughts is fine, but, it, you know, trying to be right here was never the goal, not for me and I don't think for you. The goal is to win, to get people across the finish line, because God's the only one that's ever going to be 100% right. So I'm going to continue to put it on him as, as being the master uh, technician and, and uh, uh, statistician of all these events, engineer. Um, but again, I will say, I think if, if you want to look for a seminal event, look for that event, and I'll give you a pretty good indicator of, of timing. And I was always told by my sources, this is never a date driven. It's always event driven. Yeah. So people need to look at the events and not at the dates. And Many people forget this is a military operation. So it is being done so clandestine behind the scenes. So we here that are even dialed in have a hard time putting all the puzzle pieces in and trying to match up and see how it all fits and gauge based on what we're getting, trying to gauge a timeline. And, you know, I've been in a long time, you've been in a long time. We've seen events we thought might be it come and go. And there's always another event. And it, it seems like the event that's leading up to this is what we've talked about with Israel and with this election being held in the US and the SEC. So there's there's a lot of events hinging on this right now for this this event timeline. Yeah, absolutely, 100% with what you said. And and just to add, Holly, to that, if I may, real quick, if it, this may sound rudimentary, but I think it's actually quite important. Before we came on live or we recorded in our podcast, I spent some time with God, as you know, in the field every morning as much as I can. And I say that to say that's where I get my peace throughout the day, because if you try to be in this world, you're going to be chaotic. You know, John 16, 32, 33 says, um, I have told you these things, so in me you will have peace. In this world, 
there will you'll have troubles, but take heart, I've overcome the world. So it occurred to me, if we're going to God, as we should be, in my humble opinion, for our source, why don't we just ask him? It's not beyond him to tell you. If God wants to tell somebody, hey, it's going to happen on such and such, or look for this or that, that's his privilege. And so if people want to know so bad, they, I, my recommendation is they go to him, and at least they'll get, if nothing else, the peace that surpasses human understanding to help them uh, complete the, the finish line. Very good. So is there anything else you want to add to what we've talked about already going on in the world or anything that, that would help everybody? Uh, is, now, quite my question to you is, are you talking about it as far as Iraq or the totality? Anything. Anything that anybody needs to know that you heard that is prevalent to anything that we should be hearing about or knowing about? Well, we talked about Iraq, we talked about Israel, we talked about Kim Clement, we talked about XRP. Um, I would say the other, in terms of other additional information, that's why I would be specific to your question to get it, make sure I'm answering what you want. Uh, I would look at China Taiwan. We talked about that you and I before, it's a good reprisal. Now that's going to look like World War III also. It won't be, because what did Trump say he's gonna do? He's gonna make peace deals along the way. Why? Because he already did it in his first term, the sword dance, the football, da 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 da. So we're having a, a, a General Lavalle on next month who was actually instrumental in making that meeting between Putin and Trump happen with the football six years ago. So he's going to talk about that very item. It's just FYI. Um, so I would look at China Taiwan because it'll be a short stint, two day invasion. It will probably follow up on the Israeli attack on the power plants to what you were saying earlier, which is a really good point, by the way, um, in terms of what's included in those power plants, the, the nuclear weapons, et cetera. Uh, so I think that will be important because what we want to look for is Putin. Ostensibly, Putin has already defeated Ukraine. I think we know that, but we need the, the world to see that optically, like what we know, confirmation. Uh, that's getting ready to happen. I would see him jump in forces with Xi in the Republic side, not CCP, because there are two sides to a coin. Now he goes in with them, they're going to do a short stint, make it look like World War III, much like Israel with respect to the Middle East. And the other reason that's important, by the way, with Israel is it frees up Iran, because the Iranian people themselves are good, just like the American people, but it's the governmental corruption that has enslaved them. So the people generally just want to be free. And when you blow up those power plants, you also remove a lot of the corruption in the government, specifically in Iraq. Well, let's remember that Iran is the big brother to Iraq. So if Iran is prospering, they don't need to suck off the tentacles of their little brother. That's another benefit. So with China Taiwan, that's going to free up Vietnam enough out of corruption for the Vietnamese dong to happen. So I would be watching for these events to kind of kitty corner each other. As one happens, you'll see domino effects going on, which then allows me to show you another screenshot here. So let me go to this. And this is our buddy Nelson Chimisa I told you about in Zimbabwe. Um, I know there's a lot of misinformation going on about Zimbabwe that the bonds are not worth anything. That's what the, the people selling them think because that's what they've been informed. If you go to a bank right now and you ask them about the exchange with the dinar, most of them have no idea what you're talking about because they haven't been told yet. So they don't know. They're just going on what their handlers have told them to say. I had somebody comment on my rumble the other day that they went to the Chase Bank trying to exchange the dinar. And I'm like, why would you do that? It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Who told you to do that? You know, people are getting emotional and they're, people need to think logically and proactively, not reactively. So that's another point to your, to your point. Nelson Chimis, as you know, is God's candidate for Zimbabwe. Notice he, you can't see it here, but he's wearing a gold tie. Who's that, who does that remind you of? Trump? Who just freed up last month Starlink for Zimbabwe? Elon Musk. So if Elon Musk is working with Zimbabwe, who else do you think is working with that? President Trump has been all along. We've talked about this before, Holly. This is a good reprisal. You remember when President Trump was running his show, The Apprentice? They've scrubbed that. That I've looked for weeks to try to find the video that was up before that they, the Google and all their handlers have scrubbed this video off, expunged it. But do you remember when President Trump gave a contestant a hundred trillion dollar note? He said, "Hold on to this. It's not worth anything right now, but in the future, it'll be worth a lot." Future proves past. 
So here we have Nelson Chamisa, God's candidate. They're very much behind him the way we are behind President Trump as a consensus. He dropped this hint a couple of days ago, not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some come to clear your path, be blessed. He's telling you, in my opinion, that he's coming to clear up the storm. And when he's put in and when the corrupt Edwin Mangala is inevitably removed, he's going to tuck those Zimbabwe bonds that we're holding into the Zig dollar and Zig gold coin, which they've already backed with gold, right? And in case people don't know, China offered them $300 million to go in and mine metals. Why would China do that unless they had the gold? They wouldn't. They turned them down because they want to do it themselves because he knows what's coming because he's arranging it. So the Zim bonds will get into the Zig dollars in the gold backed uh, Zig coin and it'll be one form of currency going forward, all gold backed, not gold pay. So that's an important, I think, piece of information to denote in what we're asking. A lot of moving parts to make all of this happen. Absolutely. And it's been a very slow, methodical easing from the old system to the new system. And right. really, most people haven't even felt a, a, a bleep in their lives or the economy because it's been done so seamlessly and systematically mm -hmm. taking down the one and implementing the new, you know, it's like they replace one pillar, take down the old pillar, replace it with the new pillar, and then they go to the next old pillar, replace it with the new one. So right. you're really not even feeling the the ups and downs of these changes. And you're changing not just the currency, every single thing is being changed mm -hmm. from all the governments to corporations to banking at the same time they're cleaning out all the tunnels and the dumps and the child yeah. trafficking which is right. the biggest part of all of this because that's the biggest commodity that the elites have been using and that's really just coming to light where it's brought to our attention how big that is it's bigger right. than you know uh drugs or anything that they're doing out there that we see, you know, all of this went on behind the scenes underground where nobody even realized what was going on. And it's now more and more in our faces where you can't deny it anymore. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's funny uh, that you mentioned that Holly important that you mentioned that because I remember <clears throat> last November when I was in with my, my mom for the holidays for Thanksgiving, I got a chance to meet uh, Nick Benyam in, uh, in person and we talked candidly and I said, does he watch your podcast? Because he's met him several times in my life. He said, yeah. And I said, has he watched our financial stuff? He said, yes. And I said, what does he think of it? And he said, well, if your information wasn't good. I wouldn't keep having you on. I said, that, that speaks volumes right there to our team, not so much to me, but the team. And, and yourself included in, as part of the team holy. You know, you and I talk often. Um, and I said, well, what, with that being said, the information is valid. Is he pleased with what he's seeing? He said, no. I said, why? He said, because they have a certain methodical way in which they want to wake the people up. And we're accelerating that with this information. They, they, this was done intentionally, drip, 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 flood. And I know that that tends to tick people off because they want to, you know, especially in our community, we want to, we're all, look, I, I'm <laughs> as excited and, and uh, anxious, anxious probably wrong, I'm, I'm eager to get on with my life and, you know, do what I, what God has called me to do, what God's called you to do, blah, 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 blah. I'm no different than anybody else in this community in that respect. But at the same time, because you and I, Holly, have been in this a while, I think you can admit as well as me that. What we now know, we did not know five, 10, 12 plus years ago. And, and, and God understands the bigger picture that if he does it too soon, it can hurt us. So similarly, as a lot of my audience, a lot of your audience wants to do kingdom slash humanitarian projects, whatever moniker you want to use, we have to be thoughtful and considerate in what we do with, this is why I have a chart out that I write about who I'm gonna bless and to what degree, because if we give some family members who are not as awake or awake at all, which many of us have, we could actually end up being counterproductive and hurting them rather than helping them. 
in the same way the Trump team is thinking of it in as much as it seems cruel and frustrating and exasperating. And, and truth be told, it is those things. But it's also true in the same space that is done with our best intentions in mind so that we can cross the finish line. Because I, one of the concerns I have, Holly, about our society, I think they genuinely want this to be as seamless of a transition as possible. But your family, like mine, is struggling with cognitive dissonance and has no idea about the fact that he's been president and commander in chief the entire time, let alone all the children and innocent women and even some men who have been sexually trafficked, human trafficked, compromised in, in horrific ways that when that reality hits people, it's going to be... It's going to be rough out there. And I think we need to, as and I say in our communities, be mindful of that, that we need to not be vindictive and say, I told you so, you should have listened to me, because that's what the flesh wants to do. But what God wants us to do is be compassionate as he has been with us. So I say that to say, you're absolutely right in your point, And we need to be mindful of the overarching process in this of, you know, the money is one thing and it's great, but the ultimate goal is to be in service, to, to help the poor, the needy, the lonely, the sick, the widows, the orphans, the children, um, future generations, uh, whether they're ours or somebody else's, it's ultimately about being in service. And that's what excites me about this wealth transfer is getting it to the hands of the giving people of God so they can use the talents, including you, that God equipped you with. You, you weren't put on this earth to work some pointless 12 hour day job or anyone else in behind a cubicle, making some corporation rich that, as you can see with all the precipitous layoffs, they don't care about people. They never have. This, you know, I've always had a saying, I'm not a company man unless it's my own company, meaning something that I created, that I can, you know, hire my own people and, you know, a, a sense of loyalty, which, which I'm believing in this new season is also going to come about as well. And to your point on, you know, slowly implementing people, we all have been like frogs put in cold water and the temperature has slowly been turned up as they start feeding us more and more information. We've had that with years of being involved in these communities and, and all the different information that we see on a daily basis. There's people out there that are not even privy to one iota of what we've seen it would be just overwhelming to them to just have a fire hose of this information yeah. and there i i have heard through my sources they have had psycho mm -hmm. psychologists on the team to see the repercussions of having this given to the people like where are they at are they able to handle this or is it going to be too much for the people? Um, because it is overwhelming. I mean, there's things that I've read that I just sometimes have to just shut down. I can't even read it anymore because it makes me sick to my stomach. What goes on? The first time, Holly, that I totally, the first time that I saw back in 2019, I mean, I'm in, I've been in the music industry, so I've known about the corruption that has gone on in that form. I, I love music, but I hate the industry. Thank God that's getting cleaned up as well with Hollywood and all the rest. So I've known about corruption with there, but I did not, I underscored the, the severity of how rampant sex and human trafficking is in music, especially with young women. And when I saw... This is hard to discuss on camera. I'm not, it's not a comfortable subject, but we, we're all about honesty. When I learned about, hmm, this is tough. When I learned about human meat farming and how prevalent that is, I, I could not sleep for a week. I literally shook me to my core. I mean, that I never dreamed of the cannibalism we know with McDonald's and all those, what they're doing now, but to, to see what you know they they treat humans like they treat a cow in a processing plant they let nothing go to waste and i'm not i'm not enjoying saying this by the way i'm just being honest like the the level of reptilian satanic cruelty that these demonic bastards have used for the sanctity of human life and you know what jesus says about when you harm children he says it's better to have a millstone millstone thrown around your neck and thrown in the sea than to hurt one of these one of my little ones that's quite literal and so yeah, I, I have had trouble many, many nights 
sleeping about that and thinking about, um, as you know, I have a project in Tennessee I want to do when it comes to uh, a, 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 a restorative or restorative healing retreat land to help victims of sex trafficking that have made it out and they need a place to live. Like that's something God has put in my heart in the last four years to be part of the solution. So that's how much it's rocking me in my core. But I, I totally, uh, totally resonate with what you said. And going back to your first question about the coin, I'm also going to, to prove the haters and doubters and skeptics in your channels that have said these ridiculous things wrong, we're going to take it a step further. We're also going to include potential giveaways for some of them as well if they want to enter themselves in. We'll even offer some of them as a gesture of goodwill and opportunity to get a free coin, which I will sign myself and personally mail. That's what I'm doing with uh, my channel on the side. Uh, there's already people have come forth and given their testimony and I'm praying about it and saying, God, you want me to bless this person? You know, to what degree? Because I don't want to go off and just do my own thing. I want to make sure that I've prayed it through and gotten his blessing because he might want me to bless somebody else or to a different degree. But I will open that up to people in your channel as well, just to drive that point home. And I'm not seeing a dime from that. That money goes from whatever sales we get minus the expenses goes to the channel so that we can survive and put this content on. I mean, we've gotten blocked a couple of times on YouTube with one of the people that we interview. We have to do rumbles ex exclusives with this person because we can't even get them on YouTube. So um, this is not about whatever they their, their cynical thinking is. It's not that at all. Well, thank you for sharing that. Sure. That was a, a deep, heavy conversation we just had. Whew. It is it is heavy, but it was necessary because this is the time where we need to really put our foot on the, the Peru gas pedal and really push ourselves to the finish line, not with overthinking or anything that you can do in anxiety, but just having honest conversations, being aware of it and taking proactive steps. I, I promise you, Holly, as far as my, my team and I are concerned, and you're part of that, we are genuinely here to help. We're not trying to rip anybody off. We're not trying to take from anybody. I, I never started this channel to make a bunch of money. That's what the, the reset was for. What I wanted to do is get people across the finish line to win. Yeah, we have bills to pay. They don't get paid by Skittles, but this isn't a, a get-rich-quick scheme. That's not what we're doing here. And we try to put out the best possible information that we can. Are we perfect? No. Is your audience, is my audience perfect? No. Are we right 100% of the time? Of course not. But I think, on Holly, in the spirit of honesty, I think you and I can say that conservatively, we're probably 80 to 90% over the target. Is that fair to say? I would, I would like to say that. Yes. I think it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Yes. We're more, we're more accurate than not. That's why you have the credibility that you have and, um, and, and, and your humility and your true inherent nature. I've known you long enough. Now your heart is, is to, to, to win your mother, your grandmother, you have a nurturing spirit inherently, and that has imbued itself in this movement, which is one of the things I truly respect about you and your audience as well. Thank you. You're welcome. So I don't know, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up today? Right. I mean, I, I don't know what else I could say other than just, I said what I had to say about our honest attentions, about where we are. I would say, Holly, and I'd like to get your take on this at the very end. Um, what's today? The 17th? 17th, what a coincidence. Big day. Yeah. Uh, we're about what, just over two weeks before the election, if there is one. I would encourage everybody, if there is an election, to go out and vote and vote for President Trump. I don't normally get political, but he's the only logical choice. He's the only person remotely interested in pre preserving the sanctity of faith and godly values and people's religious freedoms with whatever idioms that might be. The financial, the children, uh, restoring our rights. He's done a tremendous amount for the, the Black population in terms of the inner cities, in terms of collegiate scholarships, in terms of, you know, he brought in Ben Carson, who's a, a wonderful man, a believer who, that's a really, I think it was a wise choice on his part to bring him in um, because he's getting that godly counsel in his ear all the time. I know they still work together. Um, don't be looking for perfection because you're not perfect either. Just be looking for a person that is working on process improvement. And if you're concerned about his character, pray for him. That's the best way to get it across. Go ahead. It was interesting, a, a contact of mine 
said, because there are people out there that clearly do not like Donald Trump. And you know what? I'm not here to have anybody believe what you or I believe. Everybody we <clears throat> will. Right. However, a contact said to me was the when Trump was president, was the world better while he was president? I think everybody resounding could say yes. Was were we headed in the right direction? Did we have a lot more patriotism? When he became president, it really unified the patriotism in the country. And he's been doing his rallies ever since. Um, we didn't have that prior to President Trump when he was president. Um, and another key thing that the person said is, who would you rather have at a negotiating table? You know, Trump is a master negotiator. Mm -hmm. he, he knows the art of the deal. He knows how to get the deal done. So with that in mind, everybody, you know, whether like the man, don't like the man, he clearly is a much better choice to get the job done. Yeah, and, and thank you for that, Holly. And one other quick thing, if, if I may, if that's okay, you know, he is also like you, a fellow parent, grandparent, and he understands wholly the value of, of legacy of family. What is he leaving behind as a country? What is he leaving behind as a legacy of leadership? He doesn't want to end out on this, this way. And, uh, you know, he demonstrated that when he was running his businesses, even in multiple marriages, he was still a good father, supported his children, never left them without it. If you look at the totality of the Trump family, particularly, you know, Tiffany, Eric Barron, uh, Donald Jr., um, you look at those kids and I, I'd say they, they're pretty, nobody's perfect, but they're solid, upstanding people, even the media with as lecherous and vultures as they are, they haven't heard them dig up a lot of dirt about the kids. They, you know, they may be trying to demonize his dad, but they really don't have a lot of bad black marks they can say against the kids from a, from a moral standpoint or from a legal standpoint that, you know, they're not, they're not drug addicts. They're not hurting people. They're not out committing crimes. Um, far from it. So I think that speaks well and bodes well to the leadership that he has imbued in his own, you know, his own children. Um, people always ask me, say always ask, people ask me from time to time, you know, where do they, where, where's a good place to get currencies or where's a good place to get precious metals. And, and there are a lot of good options, obviously, but if anyone is curious or interested, we'll give you some of our humble recommendations. We'll leave that link in the description and people do your research and, and make the best choice that you can for yourself. Thank you. Welcome. Well, I think that wraps up for today. We covered a lot of subjects and uh, hit on every hot spot that everybody's talking about um, with all the, the things going on globally. So thank you for coming on and your time. And it's always a pleasure yeah. talking to you and hearing your point of view. Thanks, Holly. Thanks for having me. It's an honor and we look forward to you know, having you on again here shortly as we, uh, we get across this finish line together and win. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Bye, everybody. Bye.